For our equipment today, we're gonna to need a knife, a sharp knife that you're comfortable with, a pair of tongs, if you have them. This is for handling our chicken. Great. Your hands will work too, you're just gonna to have to wash them. You want two small spoons, one for scooping the pesto, or at least one spoon for scooping the pesto and spreading it. And we'll talk about how to do that safely so we don't spread raw chicken germs around. You're gonna need a cutting board to cut your chicken on, or your tofu, or your mozzarella, and your tomatoes. And you're gonna need a pan. I'm using a metal pan, but a glass pan will work just fine. And what we wanna do right now is get our pan ready. So our oven is preheating to 350 degrees. We're gonna take a piece of foil and line the pan because that just makes cleanup a lot easier. You just take a piece of foil and line the bottom of your pan. Once that's done, you wanna take the cooking spray and spray your pan lightly, just one light even layer. This isn't like um, spray paint, you don't need that much. Just, that's it, just mist it lightly. And the reason we're doing that is because we are cooking with cheese and cheese is really sticky. So the chicken and the cheese won't stick to the foil and the foil makes the pan really easy to clean up. You'll thank me later for that. Once you have your pan prepared, give me a thumbs up. Great. Jordan's there, Darcy's still working. Annabelle's still working. Jules is there. Mina's in the house. Annie's there. Alyssa, hang on, you're muted. You talking to me? Nope, okay. Uh, Alyssa, is your pan good? Thumbs up, great. Anybody else need more time? Annabelle's good. He's starting in the All right, we are ready for the next step. The next thing we're gonna do is prepare our protein. We're gonna be using a knife to cut our chicken or tofu into two inch strips. I'm gonna demonstrate it up here on this cutting board before you do it, because I want you to see how I'm gonna do it. If you notice this chicken breast, it has a short side and it has a long side. I'm laying it so that the long side is running across my belly, so I am parallel to it. And I'm gonna cut it into two inch strips like this, roughly two inches. It's about the length of your thumb, your first digit of your thumb, maybe, maybe an inch, okay? So with this chicken breast, I was able to slice it into four pieces. You're gonna slice your tofu the same way. You're gonna slice your tofu so it's at least an inch thick. We want nice thick slabs, not little chunks. Once you have your nice thick slabs, put them back in the bowl because we're gonna season them in the bowl and repeat that with as many chicken breasts as you have. I have two. I'm using my tongs because it keeps my hands clean. Because once you finish touching this raw chicken, you're going to want to clean your hands. So I'll repeat it again if anyone needs to see it, but it looks like most of you are doing great. I use the tongs to hold the chicken, and I'm cutting it into these nice, chunky sized pieces. I'm getting three, maybe four slices out of each chicken breast. And then they go back in the bowl for seasoning. When your meat's all cut up and in the bowl, give me a thumbs up. Good job. I like that angle there, Mina. I can see what you're doing there. That looks good. Good job, Annie. Annabelle, doing good, okay? Wanna get your chicken in a bowl so we can season it. There you go. Okay. Darcy, you're gonna to wanna to lay your tofu out flat on the cutting board so you can season each tofu steak. 
Yep, every big chunk you have, lay them out so that we can season them up. Good job, Jules. All right, Alyssa's ready to go. Nice work, Annie. See if you can cut that one into four. Once your chicken is in the bowl, you're going to want to get rid of that cutting board because it's got raw chicken juice all over it. So that cutting board can now go in the sink. And you may want to grab another one or wash that one really good because you still got to cut your tomatoes. Good. That's how we keep everything nice and clean. I love it. So this next cutting board can be small because it's just for cutting tomatoes. And let me know when your chicken is in your bowl. Oh, good. I see that. Okay, so we talked about all those seasonings, right? Now we're going to season the chicken. And you can season lightly because you can always add more as you go. If you want, you might want to grab a teaspoon measuring spoon to help you out. Because I'm a professional chef, a lot of times I don't measure my spices as I go, but I want you to get used to what a teaspoon or a half a teaspoon looks like. For our recipe, we don't have to be so exact. We can have a little more or a little less, so you can estimate as you're going. Estimation is a really good tool to use in the kitchen. So for example, with this Italian seasoning blend or any of these dried herbs, they're not really strong in flavor, so I wouldn't be afraid to use a whole teaspoon to season my chicken. See that teaspoon? It's even mounded up a little bit. I'm gonna sprinkle that all over my chicken. Always put the top back on your seasonings and your oils when you're done because they can knock over and make a big mess. Next, I'm gonna use my onion powder. If you have onion salt, you can use that too, or garlic salt, but you don't wanna add more salt at the end like I'm going to do. Onion powder has a nice flavor and it's not really strong, so I'm not afraid to use a full teaspoon here either. I'll sprinkle that right over the chicken. Close the top. Next, I'm gonna do the same thing with the garlic powder, but garlic powder can be strong. So I'm gonna estimate by filling my teaspoon only halfway full. Just an estimate. See that? That's not a full teaspoon. And that's what I'm gonna to use to sprinkle right over my chicken because garlic powder can have a strong flavor. Make sure the top goes on. I'm going to now add a half teaspoon of salt, or maybe two thirds of a teaspoon of salt, and black pepper. I have a grinder, so I just grind it in there until I think it looks good. But if you're measuring, with the black pepper, you may want to do like a quarter of a teaspoon. And again, you can just estimate. It doesn't have to be perfect. Once your chicken is seasoned up, you're going to want to stir it all together with a spoon or your tongs or a gloved hand to make sure that the spices and herbs cover and coat all of your chicken pieces. You guys are doing great.
Good mixing. Tongues can feel a little weird and awkward, but you wanna open and close, open and close, and just keep stirring your chicken around. Or like I said earlier, with a gloved hand, just get in there and mix it. Jordan's doing a great job with the gloved hand. That's probably the easiest way to do it. Okay, Darcy, I see you've got your herbs and spices on top of all of your tofu steaks. Those are gonna be delicious. Next, we're all going to transfer our protein onto our prepared pan. How you feeling, Mina? You doing all right? I see you're stirring. That's good. Once it's all mixed up, we're just going to put it on the pan, and then we'll all get caught up. You want your pieces to be kind of close together, but not touching. See how I'm laying my chicken out? Is not touching, but they are close. All right, we will wait here. Uh, give me a thumbs up when you get everything on your pan, well, your chicken or your tofu on the pan. Doing good. Okay, Darcy's in the house. Doing great, Mina. Annie, looking good. Okay, Jules is ready. Alyssa's working those tongs. Get it, girl. Mina, too. That tong action is serious. And Kara, you're doing good. Let's get a little more space in between that chicken if you can. If you just have a lot of chicken, then it is what it is. No problem. That is perfect, Annie. Just hold there for me. Jordan, can I see your pan when you're ready? Yes, perfect. Okay, just set that aside for a minute while we get caught up. That's good, Carl. How are we doing, Annabelle? Got your chicken in your pan? All right, good. All right, before we do anything else, let's get rid of this bowl and these tongs with all our raw chicken stuff. If you were wearing gloves, take those gloves off and get a fresh pair. If you used your hands, wash your hands, and then meet me back over here, okay? Get rid of all our raw chicken stuff and come back with clean hands. All right, clean hands? Yes, so fresh and so clean, clean. Okay, so for this next part, we've got our clean cutting board. We wanna slice our tomatoes. I noticed some of you have already sliced them. The rest of you, if you haven't sliced them, you wanna make your hand into a claw, tuck your fingers under while you're holding onto your tomato like this. This keeps your fingers out of the way. If you need help from an adult, don't be afraid to ask. It's better to ask for help than to get cut, right? But I want you to experience what it feels like to slice these tomatoes. If you do need an adult supervision, you guys slice it together. Both of you hold on to the handle together so that you can feel what it's like to cut it. So I'm going to use my knife to go ahead and slice my tomato. And I roll my tomatoes, so I'm gonna use two. Oh, I may not need two. Yeah, actually I don't. I don't have that much chicken. 
And I saw some of you had really big, juicy tomatoes. Lucky you. Once your tomato is set up, we're just going to set it aside for a second. Good job, Mina. There you go, Annie. Just carefully hold on to that in there. You, yep. Make sure you have enough tomato pieces to go over each piece of chicken. So I have eight pieces of chicken, but I have seven tomato slices. So I guess I do need to slice a little more tomato. I actually like this dish with a lot of tomatoes, so I will use it all. And if you have little weird ends that you don't want to use, you can always throw those in compost or you can use them in making soups and sauces. Okay, good job with those tomatoes. Once your tomatoes are cut, let me get a thumbs up. Okay, almost there. So mine is actually showing us the bridge technique where you make a bridge and you put the knife under the bridge and you slice down. That is another handy way to cut something that's kind of round and wobbly. Nice job, Mina. Annie, as you get to the end of that tomato, you might want to try the bridge technique. Make a bridge over the tomato and slide the knife underneath the bridge like this. And then slice down. Mm -hmm. Put your hands over the bridge, over like a bridge, hands over the knife, like a bridge. Like that. Like, keep trying, almost over. Uh huh. So thumbs on one side, fingers are on the other. And then they're out of the way and you can slice down. If that just confused you, don't worry about it. <laughs> okay, looks like we are good. Everybody got tomatoes? Alyssa, how you looking over there? Okay, and Annabelle? Annabelle, are your tomatoes cut up? Good, all right. Let's move on to the next step. We're gonna use a spoon to scoop pesto out of the jar. Open up your jar if you're using jarred pesto and stir it with the spoon because a lot of times the oil separates out of the pesto. So you wanna stir it up and then you want to carefully take a scoop of pesto and just plop it over the chicken. Don't touch the chicken with your spoon because then you'll have raw chicken on your spoon. You can use your finger to push the pesto off if you need to, but don't touch the pesto with your spoon. Make sure you get a plop of pesto, that's an official cooking term, a plop. Get a plop of pesto on top of each piece of chicken or tofu. It doesn't need to be a lot because pesto has a lot of flavor. So up here on the cooking cam, you'll see I'm just plopping it on there. I'm not spreading it out yet. Get a dollop of pesto on each piece and then you can go back and spread it out because you won't be scooping back into the jar again. This is just to prevent any kind of chicken contamination into our jar of pesto because we're not going to use the whole jar. You want to save this yummy pesto for something else later. Pesto is great on pasta, it's good on beans, it's good on eggs, good on so many things. So now that I have one dollop of pesto, on each piece of chicken, I can use my spoon to spread it out. And it doesn't have to be like completely coated, but you do want a bit of pesto in every bite. There we go. Once you have spread your pesto out, give me a thumbs up. 
Take your time. It's kind of like painting, but you're using a spoon to paint the pesto over the chicken. So now your chicken or tofu should be good and green. You guys, you guys are doing great. Cool. Looking good there, Jules. Jordan, is that a thumbs up I see? Awesome. How's that tofu looking, Darcy? That looks good. It looks good. Annabelle, it looks like you're done. Oh yeah, nice car. Okay, good, good. Mine has got a thumbs up. Where's Alyssa? Alyssa, how are we looking? Thumbs up, Annie's in the house. Okay, I think we're ready for the next step. We're gonna put cheese on top of all of this. So if you have sliced cheese, you're just gonna lay it on the chicken like a blanket. You may wanna cut your slice in half if it's really big or tear it in half, you don't even have to cut it. I have shredded cheese, so I'm just gonna sprinkle it over everything. How much cheese? Well, it depends. How much do you like cheese? I like cheese a lot, so I may put a lot on there. But just a little cheese will do as well. We're gonna sprinkle it all over the chicken. Or lay your slices, you can tear them if you need to. If you've got big slices of cheese, just tear them into little, little pieces and lay it over the chicken. There we go. I told you guys to preheat your oven, but I forgot to preheat mine. Silly. Okay, once the cheese is on the chicken, the tomatoes go on top. You just wanna lay them on top. We're almost ready to go in the oven. That looks so good, guys. Looks really colorful. Once you get your tomatoes on top, you want to sprinkle a little bit of salt and pepper on top of the tomatoes so that they are seasoned as well. Just a light sprinkle, not too much. Little sprinkle of salt and a little sprinkle of pepper. Okay, and when that is done, give me a thumbs up. Good. Darcy's ready to rock and roll. Annabelle's ready to rock and roll. Tara's getting her salt and pepper on. Annie's getting her sprinkle, sprinkle. Mina's getting hers on. Jules is seasoning. Jordan's giving me the thumbs up. I see Cara is good. Annie, thumbs up. Mine is doing the sprinkle, sprinkle. Darcy's grinding something on there. It looks like pepper. Cool. All right, we are ready to go in the oven. That looks delicious, Jules. Good job. So when you open that oven door, 
you have to be very careful because it's 350 degrees in there. You don't want your face anywhere near that, right? So get some help from a grown up at this point if you feel like you need it, but we're gonna open the door and place your chicken pan right in the oven. Now you're gonna set your timer for 20 minutes. Alexa, set a timer for 20 minutes. That's right, set the timer for 20 minutes. Cool. So now everything is in the oven. The most important part of cooking begins. And that is cleaning. <laughs> so while your chicken is in the oven, let's put up any extra things that are around. Let's get the spices back in the spice cabinet or wherever they go. Let's move all the cutting boards, knives, bowls, spoons over to the sink so they can get washed up or rinsed and put in the dishwasher. If you have some leftover pesto or cheese, that needs to go in the refrigerator. And then because we were working with raw chicken, we want to disinfect our entire cooking area with either hot soapy water or some sort of disinfectant spray in a clean rag or towel. So while everybody's cleaning, I'm going to mute my phone for a second and clean up my kitchen too, and I'll be right back, okay? Take your time, do a good job. This is the part the parents really like. <laughs> All right. Good. Amen. I'm done cleaning. Annabelle. When Annabelle set her Alexa for 20 minutes, she also set mine. Oh, cool. Annie, go on the chat button. Wait, why do we need to go in the chat? No. Not you, Darcy. Look out, look out, look out. Look out, man. Why is that open? So I can my perspective. I'm not seeing it. Yeah. Thank you. 
cutting up my chicken when it's done. I also have a clean knife and a clean set of tongs because all the other stuff touched raw chicken. So you don't want to touch cooked chicken. With raw chicken jar. So that's why I set all this up in my clean area. Yeah, yeah. The other thing to think about now is what are you going to eat with your chicken? We've got potatoes. Potatoes. That's same. Same. Same, Darcy. I don't know. You don't know? Well, it's always good to add more vegetables if you wanted to have a salad. That would be cool. You could do I some apples or grapes. Wait, would he check the chat box? The other thing you could do is um, maybe saute some vegetables, like saute pepper, onion, or broccoli, or spinach when you're taking um, What about pasta, guys? You ever think about maybe pasta? Okay. We're doing yeah. delicious. Oh, you take it yeah. out. This that would be really easy to cook now while you're waiting oh, for your chicken to cook. Because dry pasta takes maybe eight minutes. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to do pasta, this would be a good time to get a pot on, boil some water, and then. I don't need some pasta with it. I need some. Can we also have pasta? I'm just having potatoes with mine. You can also look around the refrigerator and see what leftovers you might have. Maybe there's some macaroni and cheese. The leftovers of my tomatoes, I ate them. Okay, I'm getting a little bit of an echo, so I'm going to go ahead and mute everybody again. But think about if you want to add anything else to your chicken dish, and this would be the time to work with your parent and get that prepared. Especially if you want to have this later, if you're not going to eat it now. This could be part of dinner. But pasta cooks really quickly. Potatoes are really good. I like the ideas I was hearing. Maybe somebody's got some leftover green beans or even some frozen green beans that you can heat up really quickly. That would be good as well. What other kind of vegetables do you guys like? I'm going to unmute you so you can hear All right. What other vegetables do you guys like? Carrots. 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 Okay. You have some Tomato. carrots you want to eat with this? Tomato. Potatoes. Potatoes. Tomato. Tomato. <laughs> yeah. We're, well, we're good. We've got that tomato on the chicken, so that's going to be good. <laughs> Asparagus. Kale. Asparagus is a good one and it cooks really fast too. You can pop it in the oven with the chicken and they would cook together. I'm, I'm gonna um, cook broccoli. Great idea. Yeah, okay. I some broccoli to go along with it. Who else likes peas. broccoli? I like broccoli. Yeah. Peas. Peas. Peas would cook really quickly. You mean like the green peas? Hey. Yeah. Peas, yep, peas go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, get out of the 
When I look at my timer, it looks like I have 10 more minutes over there. Alexa, how many more minutes? I have 10 more minutes too. Okay. okay, so while you have 10 minutes, you still have time to find something to go with your chicken. Think of it like a scavenger. Do you want to cut up potatoes? No, not right I'm going to put you guys on and find something to go with your chicken. I'm cutting up the potatoes! Potato. I'm growing potatoes in my grandma's garden. I have the same time left on my timer than you, Annabelle, because you, um, I know, I know. <laughs> I have 10 minutes. Now. Wait, Alexa, how many more minutes? Do you have nine minutes and 30 Oh my goodness, Annabelle, you just hey, made a small I'm going to mute you guys for the next 10 minutes while you get your side dishes together. Yeah, please. Yeah, here, I'm going to get you some more potatoes. Too. And then I'm going to show you how to cut them. And then you're going to cut them. What was that? Okay, I see Darcy slicing some potatoes. Looks like Kara slicing some potatoes. Annie, is that your... Oh, Jules has potatoes too. Potatoes are popular today, I see. Uh, Annie, uh, you've got a bunch of vegetables there. What do you got? I just, I'm gonna unmute you. Like, there you go. What all do you have there? Um, well, um, I have lettuce. Okay. I have broccoli. Okay. I have peas. Okay. And I have carrots. Okay, so what's your plan with all that? To um, cook the vegetables and make a salad. Sounds good. Sounds good. Mina says she's going to cook some pasta later to go with her chicken. So that's going to be good. I'm looking at about five minutes, 45 seconds left on the chicken. You guys are somewhere in that ballpark, around five-ish minutes. Alexa, 
How much longer left on timer? You have five minutes and 20 seconds left on your 20 minute timer. Yeah. Alexa's so useful. <laughs> Annie, same for me. I have Google. I'll play a song. Hey, well, no, I won't play a song. I'll set a timer for six minutes. Hey, Google, set a timer for six minutes. Okay, yeah, that. Can you smell the chicken yet? You smell the pop pesto on there cooking? I mean, I'm just starting to smell it, so that lets me know good stuff is happening. It is possible, depending on how thick your chicken is cut, you may need to add an additional five to 10 minutes at the end. What I'm gonna show you when my timer goes off is how to check the chicken for doneness. With the tofu, it will definitely be done. You won't have to worry about that. At the end of 20 minutes, your tofu will be ready to go. Oh, there's a cute puppy. Where in case on Abby. Abby, where are you? You wanna I have a meat thermometer. I have a chicken thermometer. Well, a meat thermometer is definitely a way to know that your chicken is done. Its internal temperature should be about 180 degrees. Okay. Jenny, if you see a little face in this, in Annabelle. Say that again. 180. Did anybody see um a little something in? Okay. Abby. I have three minutes. I have three minutes. What are you doing? Hey. Okay. Getting close. Fifty six, fifty five, fifty four. We are in the final countdown. Boom. Fifty seconds. Now, forty seven, forty six, forty five, forty four, forty three. It's the final countdown. <laughs> Do not remind me of that song. How many more seconds? 35, 34, 64, 64 minutes. 
seconds. Okay, before your chicken comes out of the oven. 20 seconds. I want to show you how you're going to test for doneness. So if your, your chicken timer goes off, it's fine. You can hang out for another minute. If you want to look at your thickest piece of chicken, if you look up here on my cooking cam, and you want to slice into the thickest part. When you look inside, that chicken should be white all the way through. If the chicken is pink, it's not That's my timer. Pink. It's my timer. I gotta go get my grandma. Carefully. Take the chicken out carefully. Get an adult to help you if need be. And then you're gonna take your knife and cut into that is the biggest part of the chicken. What's my arm? Oh my goodness, I'm stuck. Okay, now. We're cutting into the thickest part, and what we want to see is all white meat, no pink. She wants to see all white meat if you're cutting. All white meat once you cut. Let's try to help you get to 180. So I'm going to use this camera to come over here and look inside the chicken. And hopefully you can see it's all white. A little steamy. Mine was a little pink, so I'm putting it in again for a little longer. That's great. If it's a little pink, Pop it back in for another 10 minutes and you will be good to go. Good. For everybody else, if it looks like it's... Was it 165 or 180? It will, it will continue to climb if you have the thermometer in there. It'll go from 165 to going up. Um, if we're not going to eat until later, how do we want it back up? Well, you can just pop it back in the oven. Okay. Hey, no! What are you doing? If you're not going to eat it now, you can always pop it back in the oven to reheat it. Okay. For how long? Um, probably just 10 minutes at 350. You just want to warm it back up. Okay. You could pop it in the microwave, too. Okay, so for everybody else, you want to let the, as your chicken is done, you want to let it sit for a minute, because otherwise, your cheese is just going to run off, like hot pizza. So let your chicken sit for just a few minutes. And that way, cheese won't run off. Ow. What? Then it'll be ready to serve. As you can see with some of these, my tomatoes are sliding right off the cheese. That's how hot it is. And so just like a hot pizza, you want to give it a few minutes to sit, and then it will be ready to go. How are you guys feeling? Give me a thumbs up if this feels like it was cool. Okay. How's that chicken smell? Or tofu, how's it look? Looks good? It smells so good. It smells good, right? That pesto is a really great way to flavor food, and it just smells so aromatic. Oh, that looks great. Jules is ready to eat. <laughs> okay, so with a spatula, carefully remove whatever you're going to eat right now off the pan. If you want to save this for later and not eat it now, have an adult help you. You're going to take this whole piece of foil off the pan and set it either on a cutting board or another pan or something like that. But you want to get it off that hot pan because it's just going to keep cooking. But if you're ready to eat now, you can grab a spatula and scoop you a piece on a plate and try it. Yeah. And then let me know how it tastes. Unmute yourself. Let me know how you did. I'm just gonna cut a little piece here. I feel like cool. Yeah, I'm gonna make it.
I am really excited to try this. It looks so juicy and it smells so good. Oh, and the cheese is just dripping off. Mmm. That's delicious. When's your next class? When's your next class? We'll do another one next week. Today on Wednesday. Oh, the one that I have next today is at 3.30. Hmm. It's a baking class. Mine is really good. It's good? Yeah. Did anybody else try the chicken? It's really good, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Darcy, did you try the tofu yet? Not yet? Annabelle's taking a bite. Mm. It's really good. Good stuff, huh? You guys did a great job. You should be really proud of yourselves. If you want to take a picture of your final piece, you can email it to me. I'm going to put my email over here. You can ask your parents to email it to me. Or if your parents took pictures and they want to share of you cooking and they don't mind me sharing, they can send pictures of you cooking too. That'd be awesome. That looks so good. Look at all that pesto and cheese. Yum. Mm. That is good. Annabelle's tearing it up, so it must be good. Mina, what'd you think? Good. Good. Okay. Alyssa, did you try it yet? Yeah. Not yet. <laughs> Jordan, is yours out of the oven or is it still cooking? Um, it's still cooking. It's still cooking? Okay. If no, mine is really good. If your chicken was thick, it's definitely going to need a few extra minutes, maybe five to ten more minutes to cook. But whatever happens, you don't want to eat pink chicken. <laughs> you can take that lesson with you for the rest of your life. <laughs> you guys did a great job. We've got one more minute here. Any questions? Um, what should I put over top of it if we're going to eat it later? You can just uh, cover it with another piece of foil and put it in the fridge. And when you're ready to eat, just put it up in the oven. Oh, so guys, I'm going to email the final recipe out to all your parents and uh, we'll get another group together for next week. Will you guys come back and cook with me again? Thank you. Oh, Thank you're welcome. Make sure you have a Thank you. It's so Thank good. You. I had it twice. Good. I'm glad it was fun. Thank so you. fun. Good. Thank you. It was so good. I got, I wanted another piece. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Bye. See you next I've got my email address over there if anyone needs to contact me or send me any pictures. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye. I already have your email. Okay, turn it off. Okay, bye. Bye.